Hey guys, welcome back to the COP TV, the voice of football's most famous stand. Of course, it's time for a match preview. Southampton, the Saints versus Liverpool in the Premier League. The first game that we've been involved in since the international break. Um, and knowing that Man City and Real Madrid are next week, it's time to build up that confidence again, get that momentum back, even with the players travelling so much, including those South American lads. Uh, it's t this game is so important. I can't stress it enough. We can't look ahead to Real Madrid on Wednesday. You can't look ahead to Man City on Sunday. Everything, the focus, the attention must be on this game. There's no room for complacency whatsoever. Um, Get them likes in, get your comments in. I'd like lineup predictions and score predictions in the chat. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, we are very close to 49,000 people. So make sure that you're doing your bit, right, by subscribing if you haven't already, because we're very close now to that 50K and it would warm me up to no end if we got that. Um, so help out if you can. Um, first time. We play Southampton will be Sunday and then we actually go back there in the Carabao Cup just shy of a month um, in December. So a couple of trips to look forward to to the South Coast. Southampton have won just one of their last 14 Premier League games against Liverpool. They've drawn three and lost 10. And that one that they did win was that home uh, victory in January 2021. I think it was when Hassan Hootel cried uh, when he beat Jurgen Klopp. Liverpool's last Premier League game against Southampton, as we know, was that insane 4-4 draw um, in May 2023. They've conceded as many goals in that game as they had in their previous six visits. So we can't afford another one of those. I mean, that was just a bit of an anomaly. Um, there wasn't really much on the game in the end. Liverpool weren't going to win the league from that stage. But it was just one of those crazy games. I, I remember watching it thinking, what is... It's one of those typical end-of-season games where it's just vibes. Um, but this will be the first Premier League match between the side starting the day bottom of the table and the side starting the day top since uh, Southampton's 3-3 draw away to Arsenal. We remember that one. Uh, Liverpool have won nine of their last uh, 11 Premier League games under new coach Arne Slot. Uh, win over Southampton, though, will see the Dutchman become the joint fastest manager to reach 10 wins from the start of a Premier League career alongside Gus Hiddink, shout out Gus, um, and Carlo Ancelotti. Both with Chelsea in May and uh, November 2009. Some some stats there for you. Um, in terms of injury news, I mean, we were told, weren't we, before the international break that the likes of Becker, Chiesa, Jota, Harvey Elliott will all be back after the international break. The latest update to that is that Liverpool are looking at a possible return for Alisson and Federico. And Trent, let's not forget that. He was injured, wasn't he, against uh, Aston Villa. Um, there's no definite date yet set for Elliot's comeback, but we know it's not far away because we've seen him on the training pitch. He's been training with the under-21s. He started off without a ball. Now he's working with the ball. So hopefully that return isn't too far off because we've been starved of Harvey Elliott's absence this season so far. Can't wait to see him back in action. I really can't. Um, but luckily, just like Alisson, his absence hasn't, derailed Liverpool's results right we've still kept on winning because of the depth but having another midfield option would be massively beneficial as we know um, Jota now we never really got the the true extent and the truth around this injury we could all pretty much see what it was it was tossing do you remember when he brought Jota down in that Chelsea game about four weeks ago um and at the time, we weren't really sure what the extent of the injury was. We know it was, you know, it was a heavy hit to the rib cage, um, and whether that rib was broken, whether it was bruised, these things do take time. But apparently, he's still one or two weeks away after the international break. So we could be looking at going into the City game and the Madrid game without Diogo Jota, which would be a massive, massive loss. I think the last time Madrid came to Anfield, Jota was injured for that as well. And it's getting to that point, man, where I don't know how many more injuries Liverpool fans can take when it comes to Diogo. You, you know we love him, you know how clinical he is, but at the same time, your fitness is based around your availability. And if you haven't got the availability, I just don't know, don't know what to say. So hopefully we'll see him back. Um, I mean, it could be a bench appearance against City. We're not too sure yet. 
Chiesa, um, as we know, limited game time. I think it's 78 minutes he's played for Liverpool. Did get an assist in that 78 minutes. But he continues to build his fitness. Um, but unfortunately, again, no set date for his return. As we know, he was spotted with Lee Nobes, uh, the rehab coach at the AXA, um, yesterday, but is not in training, team training, that is, just yet. Whereas Alisson, we saw him back in training again with the under-21s. He joined Mo Salah and Harvey Elliott in that session. Uh, and as we know, he's been sidelined for seven games now due to that hamstring injury <coughs> that he picked up in that Crystal Palace match, which saw Jaros come on for the last 15 minutes. Remember that? And the biggest compliment I can pay to Quivi and Kelleher, and I've given him loads, I've paid him so many, but we haven't missed Alisson. We haven't missed Alisson. I mean... Yes, there's a couple of goals you could point out in the draw, um, you know, to Arsenal that maybe uh, Alisson would have saved. But at the same time, Keller has done more than enough to not only, you know, retain his position, but almost keep him out of the team still. So right now, knowing that Southampton on Sunday is round the corner, knowing that Real Madrid is on Wednesday, the key question for this match preview is would you start Alisson on Sunday? It's a massive question because form-wise, you know, you'd stick with Kelleher, but going into this really tough period, <clears throat> you know, you want your best number one in goal, right? And yes, Kelleher's still got, you know, that form and the confidence, the momentum. Um, let's not forget in his last game he did concede five to, to England so normally if it was any other goalkeeper in the world I'd say maybe it's a bit of a rush trying to get him back so soon but it's Alisson Becker the best goalkeeper in the world so I am leaning more towards him starting this game against Southampton the thing with hamstring injuries they can just go at any time, right? It wasn't really a a heavy shot that Allison did to actually accrue that hamstring injury. From what we saw, it was pretty innocuous, right? It didn't look like he'd, he'd taken impact. It was pretty out of the blue and he pulled up straight away with his arm up. And I think as soon as you see a player touch that back thigh or the back of their thigh, it's, it's curtains, especially for that game. So <clears throat> I'm leaning towards Allison starts. Let us know what you think, though, in the chat. Um, and as we know, Trent uh, is expected to be fit by the time we play Real Madrid. He might make an appearance, but I'm fully expecting Conor Bradley to start this game. Um, and obviously it was a decent time for him having that international break to allow him um, a bit more of a rehab. And uh, yeah, it looks like Conor Bradley will play in that one because Trent hasn't been spotted at all yet in training. So yeah, some good news and some bad news on that. I mean, like I said, initially we all thought that they'd be back, but not to be. So it looks like Alisson uh, will be in the squad at least. Harvey probably a week away. Um, Trent probably a week away. Diogo probably a week slash two weeks away. Chiesa, we're not even sure. Um, and, you know, we, we we play with what's available. And again, don't forget, you know, the Uruguayans, the Colombians, the Brazilians would have all travelled back. They're probably still in transit now. Um, and then obviously Southampton is very far away from Liverpool. So they're going to have to maybe travel uh, tomorrow to even get to that game on Sunday. So there's your injury update. Let's run through the team lineup prediction Um I'm going to go with Alisson and I wouldn't be disappointed if I saw Kelleher in goal. That wouldn't be an option. However, Alisson in goal, I think in this time, in this period of congested, really tough games, you go with your best and hopefully there's not anything that he needs to do that is going to, you know, stretch out that hamstring anymore. So I'll go Alisson, I'll go Connor Bradley, Canate and Van Dijk, especially Van Dijk who didn't really compete too much with the Netherlands he has had another week recovery so big up him um, and Canate was sensational once again for France as captain um, <clears throat> the left back position this is a tough one it's a 50-50 call to be honest it could be Simicast it could be Robertson I think you'd edge it to Robbo after his last minute winner for Scotland the other night as captain again so I'll, I'll just about put Robbo in but if you want Simicast in let me know in the chat the midfield um Curtis Jones obviously played for England. I don't expect that to be a massive sticking point. Soboslai played and scored for Hungary as captain again. So many captains in this team. Um, and yes, Gravenberch will play. I mean, McAllister, the, the distance that he's got to travel, I think it's 14 hour flight. So maybe for this um, Southampton game, you go <sighs> Gravenberch, Curtis and Soboslai, maybe. Let me know if you agree with that. 
Uh, I know Endo played and has obviously travelled a far away as captain again. Another Liverpool captain for Japan. Um, but for this game, knowing that Southampton are bottom of the table, knowing that we're going to have a lot of the ball, I'm going to go Curtis, Gravenberch, Soboslai. And again, this is where you want that Harvey Elliott to, to either be starting or playing in these moments. And then up front, obviously Nunes has to play. I mean, I'm not sure um, how tired he'll be from international duty, but at the same time, you know, with Diogo Jota still out, you know, he's, he's almost got to play. And then Mo Salah plays, didn't travel. He's the first name on the team sheet. And then again, just like a couple of other positions, it's a toss up uh, in that left-hand side between Diaz or Gakpo. I will just about go with Gakpo and maybe bring Diaz on. You know, with that, you could bring uh, McAllister on. You could bring, um, you know, other players on as well. Simakas including them. Um, so that's the team. Yes, a slightly weaker one, but with you know, what Liverpool have up against them in the next week or so and, and moving forward from that. I think if you're going to maybe look to give a few minutes rest to certain players, then this is the game. Um, score predictions, I'm going to go 2-0 Liverpool. Um, a clean sheet is as important for me at this stage as a win. I think the more clean sheets you, you accrue, it's just so impressive in the Premier League. No matter who you're playing, you saw we conceded four goals against Southampton in May. So that can't happen again, for sure. Um, and I think it's a 2-0 a is the kind of performance that you would call perfect after an international break going into Real Madrid and Man City. You haven't necessarily blown them away, but 2-0 is what I'm going for. Let me know in the chat, do you agree with that one or not? And also get your teams um, in the chat as well. Don't forget, Sunday, just before kickoff, we'll be going live on the COP TV for another watch along. Myself, Doyle and Scouse GK. If you're enjoying this match preview, remember, there's more to come on Sunday with the watch along with the boys. And then straight after that watch along, we'll be doing a preview with Raul. Right, because as you know, it's Real Madrid on Wednesday night at Anfield. Um, so yeah, that's your injury news, your team predictions, your score predictions. I mean, Southampton, as we know, bottom of the table, most likely going to get relegated this season after coming straight up. They play um, Brighton away straight after. So again, a game that they're probably going to you know, take a hit on. But right now it's one win, nine defeats and one draw for the Saints. Uh, four points, rock bottom of the table, one win in five. Um, but their win was against Everton, so we don't mind that. Um, but yeah, Southampton, as we know, they are looking to turn things around. They're going to have to go out and fight in front of their fans on Sunday against Liverpool. And the key word to take away from this, I think, is complacency. There cannot be any shred of complacency in this team from the fans. Um, and once you get this one out of the way, then you can start getting excited for Real Madrid and Manchester City and Everton and Girona and Newcastle. The schedule is crazy right now. And if Liverpool can get through this fairly unscathed, if at all, then you might see a bit of a change of uh, of energy from myself because once you get through them, you know, it's uh, it's sensational, this start that we've had. So get through this tough bit. No complacency. Treat every game like it's a final. I feel like I'm doing the team talk here in the, in the changing room. Um, so I'm going 2-0. Let me know what you think. And of course, we'll be back here on Sunday for much more of the same. Uh, really looking forward to this game. I hope you are too. Smash that like button. Get your comments in. Subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you on Sunday. Take care.